Can you turn me on? Testing. One. made. 
So let us stop trying to act like that. We don't see difference. I don't see white. I don't see black. Well, unless you color blind, you should. And uh, but but don't uh, don't look at those differences as being something wrong. That's perfect. That's what God intended. I am so grateful that my wife don't look like me. I wouldn't want to marry nobody who looked like me. I, we're supposed to be different. We treat people the same, but we treat them different. All of my children are beautiful, but all of them uh, have different attributes, and, and we treat them even though we love them all. We treat them differently even though we treat them the same. So when you see people that you love on them, love on them for who they are, not trying to overlook them, but see them. See them how God created them. Some bigger, some smaller, some tall, some short, uh, little people. It doesn't matter who they are. And it doesn't matter what their sins are. Their sins, because God loved us while we were yet sinners. So let's just love people. Everything about this that we are teaching, everything that we are doing is all in love. So uh, let us talk. Uh, Sister Cottrell is with us. Cottrell Jackson, good evening. Sister Happiness is watching with us. Good evening. Uh, uh, Sharon D. Adams, uh, Mother Adams is watching with us. So we're, we're just grateful for everybody who's here watching. Uh, we're going to try to keep up so that we can sweep the people as they come in because to me it's important to see who's with us. And, and, and if, if you have any questions, I thank you all for the comments. But I, I really would love to have questions. If you have questions, send them to us so that we can answer. We're also asking everybody that will, everyone that is able to share this video, whether you share it now, live, host a watch party, share it, so that uh, we can get the word out to as many people as possible. We want to touch everybody's lives. If you feel that this word is a good word, if you feel that what we are saying is beneficial to you and it could be beneficial to your family and to your friends, then we ask that you would please share it. Uh, and, and, and send us a message. Let us know that you are sharing it. Amen. Uh, my, one of my classmates just joined us, Brother Larry Freeman. Brother, it's good to see you. Uh, hope that you are being blessed. And uh, if you have an opportunity at some point in time, come on by and check us out. Uh, so on last week, we were talking about living a victorious life. The reason why we're talking about that is that there are a lot of people who are hurting. We just seen, I believe it was one of the insurance companies, American Family Insurance, I believe, or uh, one of the insurance companies who doing a massive layoff because they decided to combine the claims department with some of the other departments and they're laying off a lot of people. And, and people are saying, hey, even though it appears to be a bad thing, that God is going to use it for the good. And, and somebody replied, you know, I was one of the people who was let go, but I do know that God is in control. Well, I want you to know that you are victorious as long as you are in Christ. So it doesn't matter what's happening around you. It doesn't matter even what's happening to you. What matters is what's happening through you. God is working through you, through his son, Jesus Christ, and you can and will be victorious. I don't want you to think that, that God is only the God who can. God is the God who will, and if you trust in his word. Now, with me saying that, let me also start with this. In Hebrews chapter 11, we always start off with, without faith, it is impossible to please God. But those who come to God must first believe that he is or that he exists and that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. It doesn't make sense for you to listen to me and talk for the next hour and 10 minutes, an hour and 15 minutes if you don't believe the word of God is true. I'm, not, I'm going to do my best not to give you, per se, my interpretation of the word, more so than I'm going to give you exactly what the word of God says. I want you to know that the word of God is true regardless to who says it. Uh, the, the, the word stands alone and the word doesn't need Alonzo Adams interpretation or Alonzo Adams version. We have the King James and we have the NIV and 
NASB, and we got all of these different, the message and, and all of that, but the word of God is true by itself. So I'm not going to tell you what I think. I'm going to tell you what the word of God says. If you can believe the word of God, then you can have that same victorious life. It doesn't matter what your background is. It doesn't matter if you have money. It doesn't matter if you're lacking money. It doesn't matter if you're sick or if you're well. Uh, and, and if you are sick, don't allow Satan to make you think that your sickness is necessarily because of your sin. Sometimes God just wants to get the glory. But if you have sinned and have fallen short and, and, and your sickness is something that you have brought on because the Bible does say it's for those who uh, uh, who suffer or, or for those who uh, Lord Jesus yeah if you sow unto the flesh corruption you shall of the flesh reap corruption so there are some people who are sick because it was uh, wet rainy and cold and you went outside with nothing on and you caught a cold and, and, and now it's because of uh, you being out in the elements that could be the case but it doesn't matter God can still heal you and you can still ask God for a healing, even though uh, you may have done some things that were not as wise as you should have. So, all that being said, uh, we, we had talked through a lot of these scriptures on last week about living a victorious life. Now, um, Romans 8 verse 37 says, Romans 8 and 37 says, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him, through Jesus Christ, that loved us. I'm just kind of taking you back through some of these things because we're trying to get to a point. Uh, once we talk about this victorious life, then the next thing that we're going to talk about in just a few minutes is the gift of being victorious and what is the purpose of us being victorious. So, uh, First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57 says, But thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So once again, you see that the way that you have victory is through Jesus Christ. Uh, one of my cousins sent a message today. And he said that he was grateful for those who had stood with him. And he realized uh, that God is, is being gracious to him and is giving him the things that he has asked for. And I, I mentioned to him, that's great. I'm glad that you realize that you know that your gifts uh, are, are because of Jesus Christ. But in your victorious living, if, if God have given you the victory, what are you going to do with that victory? Are you just going to celebrate uh, that, that you are victorious and, and, and all of that, but you don't do anything with it? Now, uh, I'm, I'm, we're going somewhere. Uh, Galatians 5 and 16. Again, we're just kind of recapping some of these things from last week. This I say then, Galatians 5 and 16, this I say, to walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And then John 6 and 63 says, it is the spirit who gives life, for the flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. So walking in the spirit is walking in the word. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. The Word of God is Jesus Christ. So your victorious living is only in Jesus Christ. Now, hopefully you all have uh, uh, all of the scriptures that we went over on last week. If not, when you get done uh, with today, go back and look at last week and, and revisit some of the things that we are saying. I want to talk to you for a little bit today because uh, I, I had a meeting this morning with some of the pastors and they were, you know, some were asking, what do you think we're going to do? Uh, you know, do you think that COVID is going to be over? Do you think that, that, that uh, we're going to be able to go back to regular service or, or should we continue 
with the video and, and what's going to happen and I'm concerned and, and we need to start preparing for uh, the next phase and the next stage and people started saying things and, and some of the people were saying some great things but I and not that God had given me any more revelation than he'd given anyone else but sometimes we all have to be reminded I reminded him what the scripture said I understand that you're asking for everybody's opinion but what does the word of God say the word of God says, take no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow has enough problems of its own. Let us then uh, be steadfast and hold fast to profession of our faith for today. Give us this day our daily bread. Yes, I know it is wise to, to make sure that, that we don't just live for today. We have to live for tomorrow also. We're not going to take all of our money and spend it today. We're also going to spend uh, or trying to save money to make sure that we have enough to live for tomorrow if God will spare or if God tarries. But the thing that I, I, I want to, to encourage this other pastor was uh, don't worry about if, if, if we're going to continue to do videos for next year or whatever. We, we have to deal with today. And if we didn't think that we were going to be able to make it this far with COVID, but if God had provided uh, the vision, then God will provide the provision. So don't worry about what's happening tomorrow. Let us just focus on today. And in doing so, we, I mean, uh, the conversation just continued to go, and, and we were talking about so many things. And we started talking about what is the purpose of the of the church and there are so many people who are hurting we need to figure out what we are doing in this church that will allow us to minister to other people so yes <clears throat> we are grateful that God has given us a victorious life but if you are only victorious so that you can claim your victory but you are not victorious to where you can help anybody else, then we have a problem. The church has become so situated on gaining for themselves. Uh, the, the, a lot of churches, and I'm, I'm not saying all churches, so I'm not talking about your particular church or, or, or whatever. What I'm saying is there have been so many churches who have gotten away from uh, blessing people in their community. Uh, most churches are trying to see how many members can we get. Uh, everybody is wondering when we're going to be able to come back to church. Well, it doesn't matter if we are in the building or not. If you are not focused on blessing somebody else and taking the gospel to them, then what good is it coming to this building where we're trying to get people saved? And a lot of churches are trying to get the people to come off of the street and come into the church. Well, yes, the church is here for you to get saved, but the idea is, Jesus says, I came to seek and to save those who are lost. So we're not coming to church to get you saved. We're coming to church to get a word from the Lord. We're coming to church to get the people who are saved regenerated, to, uh, to build them up and to encourage them and to edify them and, and, and to uh, uh, exalt uh, and, and do all of those things to the saints who are already here. The, we're not calling people in to get saved, although if somebody comes in, we certainly will help them to get saved and give them the instructions. But we come in to worship. We go out to serve. So, so many churches who've been uh, stuck on just trying to get people in the building right now, they're lost because they don't know what to do. If I can't get in the building, then I'm just going to shut down. Well, our job is not to fill the building. Our job is to, to allow the spirit that's in us to fill our job sites, to fill the grocery stores, to, to fill the barber shops. Our job is to go out and show the love of God. Let your light shine, brothers and sisters, so men and women can see your good work. Everybody in the church should be doing a good work, so don't come to the church to do a good work. Go outside. Go to your jobs, in your home. Do your good works out there. 
So, uh, what are we saying? What are we doing? As we are talking about this victorious life and being victorious, that's great. But if, if you're not uh, if you're not doing things to where what God has given you, then what is the purpose of being victorious if, if it's only about you? The church, and, and, and I'm using this term in a very generalistic way, so please don't uh, forgive me for overgeneralizing, but for the most part, there are a lot of people in the church or a lot of churches, period, that have gotten to the place where they, uh, they or we, overall, have started just looking out for number one. And it's all about me. We have become really selfish with the gifts of God and, you know, God has blessed me. But what, what is the purpose of being victorious? What is the purpose of God blessing you? If God has blessed you and you haven't blessed anybody else, then there's something wrong. Let us start now. Let's, let's look at uh, Matthew chapter 22, verse 36 through 40. All right, Sister Jeanette Whitworth, we're grateful to have you with us. Charmel Myers and the Myers family, we're grateful to have you. Uh, for those who are sending out messages to other people, uh, to Captain Clay Farmer, we're grateful to have you, brother, uh, wa uh, watching with us. Um, Lord, if I'm pronouncing the names wrong, please forgive me. James Tran, who's watching with us. Jose uh, Hiraco. If you are watching with us, thank you so much, uh, Eldora Benjamin. Uh, all of you all who are sharing this message, thank you so much. Uh, Matthew chapter 22, verse 36 through 44. Jesus is, is speaking and people are speaking to him. And someone said to him, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? And Jesus said unto him that thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like unto it, or like unto the first one. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So here is what we're saying right here. The question that was asked is, what is the greatest commandment? Well, the greatest commandment is to love God. That is your greatest commandment. And he said, if you love me, then you'll obey me. You'll, you'll, you'll obey my commandments. But then the second, the second law says to love your neighbor as yourself. Brothers and sisters, this is where we're having a big problem right now. Many people, uh, whites, blacks, Hispanics, Asians, then everybody is all about me. All about me, all about me. Well, the Bible says that love your neighbor as yourself. So if you see your neighbor hurting, act like you're hurting also. If you love other people, then you should see that when those other people are hurting, that you are hurting as much. So it doesn't matter necessarily and, and this is what's happening. And I believe if the world would just love each other, if people would learn how to love. Now, I know God is love and Jesus is love. And the reason why a lot of people are not loving each other is because they don't have Christ. And, and that's true to a degree. But there are a lot of church people. There are a lot of churches that's not showing love. Now, uh, once upon a time, we preached a message about the dangers of dealing with church folks. Let me tell you something. There are a lot of churches, black churches who, who are talking hatred, and white churches who are talking hatred, and Hispanic churches who are talking hatred, and, and, and every nationality. There are somebody somewhere uh, who's not talking God talk, and a lot of people have said, well, they must not be real Christians. Let me 
take you somewhere. Um, go to go to Second uh, Chronicles. That's these are not in my notes, but I, I just want to take you there because I'm trying to make a point. Go to Second Chronicles, chapter seven, and. Well, just to make the point, we'll stick with verse 14. We'll stick with verse 14, uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. It says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now, all of this I brought up because just because a church is a church and just because you're dealing with church people, there are church people who say they love the Lord and, and they have salvation and they still got it wrong. There are people in, in, in uh, the Baptist, the Church of God, uh, Apostolic, Pentecostal, who are saved, but they are still hated. Yeah. So don't think that just because these people are in the church that they are not wicked or that they don't have wicked ways. Here, God is saying, if my people, well, his people are the Christian people. Today, Christians, if my people, those who are called by God's name, those who subscribe under the name of Jesus Christ, he says if they will turn from their wicked ways. There are a lot of church people, there are a lot of churches that got some wicked ways. If some, if, 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 if prostitutes come into church and drug dealers and whoremongers and, and gays and lesbians and transgenders and all of them walk in the church and we tell them, you can't come in here because you ain't right. That's wicked. All right. All right. Those are the people that we are trying to reach. Right. It is not our job to turn them away. It's our job to bring them in. Right. Well, pastor, will you allow them to be a member? Yes, I allowed you to be a member. Now, I, I will not celebrate their sin. I will not condone their sin. But I will not, under no circumstances, turn them away. God has not turned us away. And, and, and all of us got sins, but some people's sins are more visible than others. So we have to be careful not to be hypocritical in what we are doing. So I, I, I'm saying that because... The reason that we have so many problems and we have this big race war in the United States is because God's people are not loving. Nobody expects the world to love. I expect the snake to be a snake. I expect the dog to bite. Don't tell me that your dog with teeth won't bite. If your dog got one good tooth, he or she will, can bite. So when, I, when, 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 when the Ku Klux Klan is talking, I don't expect them to, to hate me. Or I, I'm, I'm not, excuse me, I do expect them to hate me. I, I, I'm not surprised by their hatred. And I'm not even bothered by their hatred. Now when you have those who are in, let's say, the Southern Baptist Convention, because that's where we have heard about a lot of race wars and all of that, and you have a whole lot of people in, in, in not just the Southern Baptist, Northern Baptist, uh, East West Baptist, Missionary Baptist, and, and, and we have a lot of these people who are supporting Trump, not in his, in, in, in his, uh, in his policies, but in his practices, who are saying that, that, that Trump is for everybody. And, and when you see a whole lot of almost every white supremacist is voting and, and backing Trump, that ought to say something to you. Now, it's not always that, that birds of a feather flock together, but I'm just saying, be careful who you associate with because
because you can be guilty by association. Do not allow your good to be evil spoken. Now, let me say this real quick to you. I'm not saying that if you support Trump that you're a racist. Right. By no means am I saying that because there are a whole lot of things right now that I am truly upset with the Democratic Party and what Joe Biden uh, uh, and Ms. Kamala Harris is, is supporting and endorsing. But I have to choose which one of them and, and, and I can talk with Republicans and Democrats and liberals and Green Party and, and everybody else without hating them. I can respect their differences because I understand that for the majority, the Republican Party is pro-life. The Democratic Party is pro-choice. Uh, uh, there have been a lot of great things that President Trump has said in regards to the church. But I also know that some things that he has said has not lined up with some things that he has done. I also know that almost every politician has said something that they ain't backed up. So once again, this is not about politics. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to bring the point home to show you how in the church, what we have is a problem of love. And uh, being victorious in the church or having a victorious life, if you are in Christ, what are you going to do with that victorious life? Are you obligated to not only have victory in your life, but share that victory? The problem is most of us who, who come up, most of us who are victorious, we don't bring nobody with us. Now you said, Pastor, listen, they didn't go to work, I went to work. They didn't, uh, they weren't up all night long. And I'm not saying that, that we need to have a socialistic type of, of government or socialism to say, if I make $100,000, my job is to, to, to spend $50,000 or give $50,000 away. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that you ought to do something that betters the kingdom of God better your brothers and your sisters, and if nothing else, give the gift of love. Now, <clears throat> go to, uh, to Luke chapter 22, verse 32. All right, my friend Tony Furman, he says, sounds like my pastor. <laughs> Uh, Tony and I were stationed together. He signed in with us on last week, and he's been following us ever since. Uh, an individual who I was stationed with uh, for three years and uh, just just got to, to know all of my, my shipmates and to love them. Also, my cousin Kenny in, in Denver is watching, and he says, uh, Tony says, the word is the word, whether black or white, you speak the word, thank you. Brother, thank you for, for confirming. The Bible says, out of the mouth of a witness shall the word be confirmed. So we thank God that out of the mouth of one or two witnesses will God's word be established. So I thank you for knowing the word in order to even be able to witness to it. Uh, so Luke chapter 22, verse 32. It says, here is Jesus speaking. He says, but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not, and that when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Now here is, here is where we're going. How many of us have had a come up in, in some way or another? God has blessed you financially. God has blessed you with wisdom. God has blessed you uh, uh, with a family. God has blessed you with a business. God has God has blessed you with whatever. Let me say this. No matter whatever your blessings are, they are not all for you. Whatever your blessing is. Well, God blessed me with a family. What are you trying to say? Use your family to bless somebody else. Well, Pastor, I don't understand what you're saying. You're telling me to give my family away? No, I'm not saying that. But why do you even think that you were saved? You weren't saved so that you could just live a victorious life and die and go to heaven. When you are converted, the idea is that you will get strength in your conversion. And now you have enough strength 
with someone else. Yes, yes, yes. Strengthen. When you are converted, yes. strengthen your brethren. Yes. Well, what, what do you mean strengthen them? How, or you mean I, I literally should share my strength? That's what the Bible tells us to do. No, it don't, Pastor. Yes, it does. And I can prove it. All right, all right. Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15, verse 1. Let me know when you got it. Everybody who's is with us. All right. Romans 15 and 1 says, We then, us, those of us who are strong, ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. God didn't give you strength so that you can run around boasting on how strong you are. That is not why God gave you strength. God gave you strength so that you would have enough to pick up somebody and carry them. In the military, when those of us who are on the field, if one of your brothers or sisters fell in battle, the idea is that you would not leave them there. You wouldn't turn around and see them and say, I'm going to make sure I tell your mama or your daddy you died valiantly on the field. Your job is to pick them up and try to carry them. Many times in boot camps, we were doing push-ups. You weren't doing push-ups to tell somebody how many you could do. The idea was to strengthen you so that not only could you carry your backpack and your gun and your boots and all of that, but you could also, if somebody went down, you had the ability to pick up your brother or your sister and carry them. Too many times in the church, one of our brothers or our sisters fall, and all you say is, I'm going to pray for you. No, the Bible says those who are able restore such a one. Pick them up. Those who are strong, bear the infirmity. Pick them up. If they got one leg, you become their leg. You walk with them. If somebody is weak and, 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 and they're dealing with, with uh, uh, drugs or whatever, well, I need to, to, to distance myself from them because I can't allow my good to be evil spoken. No, attack yourself if drugs is not your problem. Now, if you were delivered from drugs, then find a brother or sister who wasn't on drugs to help the individual who was. Right. Right. Don't put yourself, flee from evil. Yes. So if you know that you got a problem with women, don't go to a woman individually by yourself talking about, let's pray and touch and agree. Right. Yeah. God will give you wisdom. Yeah. And he will give you wisdom. And I'll show, we have scriptures that even talk about this. God is not going to give you wisdom just for you. The purpose of wisdom is to edify those who are around you. Uh -huh. Alright. Now, let's, let's go. James chapter 1, verse 17. Why do you have a gift? Do you have that gift because you are just so talented? Do you have a gift because, you know, uh, you were just born with, with natural abilities? And, and, and uh, when you sing, I mean, people just melt and they cry and, and all of that. But James chapter 1, verse 17 says, every good gift. And every perfect gift is from above. It is coming down from the Father of light, Jesus Christ, God the Father, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. All good gifts and all perfect gifts come from God. So if the, if the good gift came from God, then let me tell you this. You didn't earn it. All right. You did not earn the gift that God gave you. Because the gift that God gave you, he gave you prior to you were being born. The Bible says, before I knew you, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. 
So the gift that God gave to you, there's no way that you could have earned it if you hadn't even been born. You had, there was no way you could do the work to earn the gift. So if the gift was given to you, then freely you receive. Freely you give. I said this past Sunday, I was doing a job uh, over at Leonard Baptist and uh, my, my, my godfather of, of, of soul was there, Bishop Thompson, and we were talking and, and, and uh, getting the work done. I'm getting ready to leave, and they have a food drive. And uh, one of my cousins, uh, Dr. Matthew's uh, son and Bishop Matthew's brother, was there, and he said, Cuz, come and get some of this stuff. I said, man, we're good. God has blessed us, we got food. He said, well then don't just take it and use it for yourself. Find somebody who you can be a blessing to. I said, okay, I'll, I'll take a few. So he opened up the trunk and he started loading and, and he told uh, the National Guard who was there loading all the food, give them five. And then they put five in the back of the trunk and I guess they didn't like the way it looked. He said, put 10 in there. And then when it was over, he said, put 12 in there and throw some of them meat packages in there also. And I'm saying, Lord, there is no way I can do anything with all of these 12 boxes. The only thing that I can do to make sure that it doesn't go to waste, follow me, I'm going to take you somewhere. The only way I can make sure that it doesn't go to waste is to give it to somebody else. At that moment, I realized I had missed a call from my mom. I called mom. She said, what you doing? I said, I'm on my way over there. She said, good, I need you. I said, good, I need you too. Because I need to give you some food so that you can help me give it away. Now, when I got there, uh, I started taking boxes out. She called her neighbor across the street, her neighbor next door, a pastor around the corner, somebody uh, else, and one of the other members. We gave them a couple of boxes. We just started giving things away. When I got home, I was waiting for the neighbor who had been very cordial with us to give him one. But in the meantime, I saw my next door neighbor who hasn't always been so cordial. Who have called the police on me at least three times. Who have reported us to the homeowners association on several different occasions. Now, the Bible says do good to them. Oh, come on. Who despitefully misuse you. And that when a, a, a kind soft word will turn away wrath. Now this man, uh, his family talks to us, but he hasn't been doing a whole lot of talking. But he was coming down the driveway, and I went and I got a box of food. And I'm walking towards him, and he stops with anticipation like, what is he going to do with this? Is he going to throw this at me, or what is he going to come out of his box with? You know, I don't know if, uh, but I said, sir, there was a food drive. And it was given to the church, and the church would like to give it to your family. I don't know if you could use it, but these are the contents of the box. He said, wow. Well, thank you. The very next day, I was outside. He came outside, and he said, hey, neighbor, how you doing? The gentleman hasn't spoken, really, to me in a very long time. Now... And in, in the defense, I hadn't spoken to him much either. So I'm not passing judgment, but it was on my heart to do good because it was a gift. Now, what did that gift do? That gift of love, because of all of the gifts, and we're going to bring this up in a little bit if we can get to that scripture today. The Bible says when you are pursuing gifts, the greatest gift, is the gift of love. If you don't have charity, if you have, if you can speak in tongues, if you can heal, if you can do all of these things, but you can't love, then you've missed the boat. My friends, my brothers, my sisters, the children of Jerusalem, a lot of us have missed the boat. There is somebody right now who's waiting on your gift. But we've been selfish because we think that our gift belongs to us. Just because God gave it to you don't mean that he gave it to you just for you. 
Okay. <clears throat> Go to 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. I'm going to show you once again, if once, if for any reason you don't believe me yet, maybe this one might be able to sway you. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. Now, I'm reading this from the ESV, the, the English Standard Version. Uh, all of these that were downloaded were downloaded from the ESV. So if you're reading it from the King James Version, it's okay. They, they, they still should say very, very close and wordy. 1 Peter 4, verse 10. As each has received a gift, use that gift to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Use the gift that God gave you for the purpose of serving one another, not to serve yourself. Now, keep this in mind. Use your gift to serve one another. Go to Ephesians chapter 4. I'm, I'm going to mess with some, some preachers and some people uh, in, in the clergy. Mm -hmm. Ephesians chapter 4. Now. I'm not asking you to call anybody out. I'm not asking you to point the finger. I'm showing you once again where the church has failed in this phenomenon. Ephesians 4 verse 11, or starting at verse 11. And he, we're talking about God, and God gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. Now, God gave them, God gave us. The reason why I am here is because God gave me to the nation. Yes, I am designated for Jerusalem, but God has made me a prophet. Now, when I say prophet, I don't mean in the sense of prophecy. But God hath made me a spokesperson, a messenger of his grace. He hath made me a prophet or a speaker to the nation. And not just the, the United States, but all nations. God hath given us a word to give to anyone who will listen. The problem is that we've gotten some people in high places in the church who once they have received the title have lost their mind. This is what happened in the days of Christ. The, the scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, all of those who had religious power uh, in the high council seek to kill Christ because Christ was undermining their power. Their positions, their high robes and priestly robes and the money he and power that came with their position. The church got pastors and, and, and everybody now from, nobody wants to be an evangelist, everybody wants to be a pastor and then as soon as they become pastor they want to be bishop and as soon as they become bishop they want to be an apostle and then they are the most reverend, the most high reverend bishop and, and all of these titles because even the scripture gave a hierarchy of which came first uh, and, and, and who answers to who. But I want you to know that God didn't make me pastor so that I could find an armor bearer to carry all of my books and my robe and, and my briefcase. God didn't make me pastor so that I could have dominion over people. Ephesians chapter 4, after verse 11, tells you why you have these people. 
All of us, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers, all of us are for the perfecting of the saints. Here's the gift. God gave some apostles. God gave. When God gives, it's a gift. The gift of the apostle is to serve the body of Christ. The gift of the prophet is to serve. The gift of the evangelist is to serve. The gift of the pastor and teachers are to serve, not to be served. I know some of you all got pastors who, who got an entourage like, 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 like they are a, a movie star. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't honor. Don't get me wrong. Please don't misunderstand this. I'm not saying that you shouldn't honor the man of God or honor the woman of God or, or, or bestow gifts to them or, or whatever. The Bible says if, if they have given you the word of God that they are entitled to your monies and your gifts and, and all of that. But many uh, of these prophets and apostles and bishops and evangelists and pastors and, and teachers, a lot of these people have taken on titles so that they can be worshipped instead of worshipping God through serving. Jesus said, now Jesus is the high priest. The Bible says that we don't have such a high priest that doesn't understand our infirmities, who is so far removed from our infirmities. But even Jesus being the highest says, I will let the, let the, the greatest become the least. I know some preachers who won't come to church unless they get to sit in the pulpit. That's one of the reasons why we remove the whole stage. They have to sit in the big chair. If, 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 if the only thing you want to do is have a big seat, then get you a recliner at home. And you can sit in your big chair all day long. But that's not why God gave you a gift. Your idea, the higher up you go, you should be serving more. The thing that I love about the people who I refer to as Bishop, my pastor, and, and, and Bishop Thompson, uh, uh, and, and all of them who I see, they are serving. My pastor told me, son, I don't care nothing about a title, and, and, and he doesn't. He, he said, I didn't accept this honor of the title because it was going to open doors for me. He didn't need a door open for him. He's been pastoring pastors for almost as long as I've known him and never had a title and didn't care anything about it. Didn't need a staff. Didn't need the robe. I don't think I've ever seen him preaching the robe, by the way. These are the things that man has done to bring honor on himself, not to bring gifts to other people. <laughs> Mr. Tony Furman said, I would thank you. I would be the white guy in the back clapping off beat. <laughs> it don't matter if you clap off beat. The thing we ask you to do is clap. The Bible says that we can praise him with, 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 our, with our string instruments. We can praise him with our hands. We can stomp our feet. Let everything that have breath, it didn't say your breath had to smell good. Let everything that have breath make a joyful noise. However you do it, if you clap on the two and the four, or if you clap on the one and the three, it don't matter. Just give God praise. God has given us all of these things. He's given us the activities of our limbs. God gave us the breath so that we could praise him. But many of us take that same breath and curse the God that blessed us. Let, let, me, let me go back. Let me go back. Let me go back.
Huh. Gifts. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 8. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Y'all can go back and read the stuff later. Anyway, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. Deuteronomy 8, verse 18. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee the power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he sware unto thy fathers, as it is this day. Pastor, now you about to mess up. You about to mess up because I see where you're going. I see where you're going to go with this. Remember the Lord God, because it's he who gives you the power to get wealth, that his covenant may be established, that he swore unto the Father, Preacher, my wealth is for me. I work for it. I would not did it. My wealth goes to me and my family and all of that. Well, remember one, yes, that charity should begin at home. So you want to take care of your home? You want to take care of your wife and your children? The Bible says that a wise man will leave an inheritance for his children's children. But remember, God has made and has swore to our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, uh, KP, Alonzo, uh, JW, God made a, a covenant with the forefathers that he would take care of us and the nation. Now, when you go to work and you pay your tithes, do you realize that your tithes is so that God's covenant can be established? When you get your money, please pay your tithes, give an offering and, and, and all of that, and then take care of your household bills. But if you see somebody on the street who's suffering now, and in all your ways, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lay not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge God, God will direct you. Listen, if you see somebody on the street, don't be afraid to say a prayer, Lord, I see them and I have compassion. The Bible says Jesus saw them and had compassion on them. You can have compassion. They could be a drug addict or a drug, uh, 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 a drug dealer or, or, or whatever. They could be an alcoholic. They could be whatever they may be. But if you feel compassion and you want to give and be a blessing to them, do it. If, if by any chance they do wrong with the gift that you give them, that's not on you. God is going to repay you for the gift that you gave. Now, again, I say acknowledge God. Pray and ask God so that you are not giving what's holy to the dogs. Pray to God that, Lord, help me to make sure that I am giving uh, to the right person. I'm not, gonna, I'm, I'm not giving to a child pedophile who's going to take this money and buy child porn and, and, and traffic children and all of that. If, if you're doing something and the Holy Spirit know the intentions, believe me, the Holy Spirit will speak to you and say, uh, 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 no, I know you got good intentions, but not this one. But first of all, when you get up in the morning, already acknowledge God. God, guide me. Direct me. Put people in my path that I can be a blessing to and know that when you are blessing somebody, that God is going to bless you in return. You cannot give unto God and God don't bless you so much more than what you already have or than what you are going to give. Yes, Matter of fact, I can prove this. Uh, we're, 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 we're going away from uh, we're going away from, from, from this here. Uh, go to Luke chapter 6. Luke 6, and I'm going to give you the 638 that we, you looked up for me the other day. Yeah, 638. 
I, I, I want to show you this. I just, again, I don't want to ever give you my opinion. I want to give you the word of God. Luke 6 and 38 says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. Brothers and sisters, stop stopping people from blessing you. They are blessing you because God has told them to bless you because you have been a blessing. If somebody is trying to bless you, that's because that you have given and God says, I'm going to give it back to you through people. Give and, and men shall give unto your bosom. Now he's not just going to give you what you gave. He's going to give it to you good measure. Break down, shake it together, and then listen to this. Why is God going to allow it to run over? Is, 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 is God into wasting anything? God waste not, won't not. God is not going to allow it to waste, but he's saying, hey, I'm going to let it run over because there are people who are around you that will be able to gleam from you in the Old Testament, they talked about gleaning. If you had a, a large field that you planted, the Bible says don't pick everything to the very corner. Leave some of those vegetables and things out there so that somebody in the community who may not have a garden can come and, and, and get something from it. They may not have any land. You've been blessed with land, so God is saying leave some of that. And allow somebody to come and, and, and get something from your land. So when, 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 when you are just overflowing with blessings, don't try to pick it up and, and try to restuff it. God intended for that overflow to be for somebody else. Your gift of finances is for the kingdom of God. Now, God is saying, I'm only asking you for 10%. If I, if I gave you, brothers, sisters, sons, and daughters of Jerusalem, if your pastor came up to you and gave you $100 and said, I want you to give me 90 back, but I still will leave you with 10. I gave you 100, but I'm asking you to give me 90 back. Most people actually if you understood the principle, would say, well, if you're going to give it to me, I didn't have anything to begin with. So I'm going to have more than what I started with. So yes, if you give me 100, I'll give you back 90. But God says, I'm going to give you 100, and I'm only going to ask for 10, plus an offering, whatever the offering is to you. Whatever amount that means to you. Listen to this. Even though he could say, I require half, he doesn't. Or he said, I could require all. Even though he's only asking for 10% back, I need you to understand that the other 90% still don't belong to you. He's allowing you to use that. He said, give me the 10%. You can keep the 90, even though the 90 belongs to me. Pastor, that ain't what the Bible said. The Bible said that if I give him the 10, I can keep the 90. Yes, but it still don't belong to you. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. Okay, let me prove it to you. Go to Psalms chapter 24. Psalms chapter 24, verse 1. I'm, I'm not turning so that I don't uh, lose my spot. Yes, I am. Might as well. I don't know where I'm at. Psalms. 
Psalms 24 and 1. And it says, the earth belongs to the Lord. And the fullness thereof, everything in the earth, belongs to the Lord. And everybody that lives in it belongs to the Lord. So the earth is God's. Everything in the earth is God's. So is your, is your 90% still in the earth? Yes, it is. So that belongs to God. By the fact, are you in the earth? Yes, you are, because you don't live out of space. And, and, and everybody who's trying to go to Mars, sooner or later, you're going to have to come back home. The earth is the Lord, and the fullness thereof, and they that dwell therein. So don't nothing belong to you. Everything belongs to God, including the 90%, the 89%, whatever percent you think is left to you don't belong to you. It belongs to God. And, and when you don't pay your tithes and offering, you are not just robbing God. The Bible says, uh, uh, have you robbed God? And many people say, well, I haven't robbed God. Well, God ain't the only one you robbed. Well, well it was just against the church. Okay, well, let me prove that one to you, too, while we're on this subject. So there's a lot of people who, who are not paying tithes, and man, I was really trying not to go here, but we got to tell the truth no matter what. I'm hoping that this don't offend you, but if it does, I'm not sorry. It's, it's the word of God. Malachi chapter 3, verse 8 says, Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. Uh, but you say, where have we robbed you? And he said, tithes and offering. And he said, uh, you are cursed with a curse. Well, pastor, we already know this. We just said that, that, that we understand that if we don't pay tithes, that we have robbed God, but we ain't robbed nobody else. Oh, but look at the, the, the B clause of verse 9. For ye have robbed me, even the whole nation. Not only did you rob me, you robbed everybody else. Well, God, how did I rob everybody else? Because he says, bring your tithes and offering into the storehouse, that there will be meat in the house. Well, what is the purpose of having meat in the house? Because I made a covenant with the people that I was going to provide for them also. So you all remember in, in Hebrews chapter 11, those people who had the same faith. You all remember there were people who had faith, who was blessed financially and lived in big houses. And God blessed them and, and they had cattle and, and, and all of that. But then the Bible says there were some who had the exact same faith. But they lived in caves. They didn't have a big house. They didn't have a fancy car. So God says, I'm providing for them. You all remember Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the, the Son of the Most High, the, the, the Prince of Peace. He says, foxes have holes and, and, and birds have nests, but I, the Son of Man, don't even have a place to lay my, I'm homeless. Don't you think that Jesus Christ would have, he said, in that last day, he's going to tell you, when I was hungry, you didn't feed me because there was no meat in the storehouse. When I was set outdoors, nobody helped me get a place to stay. Why? Because nobody was paying their tithes. Well, Pastor, I, 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 I said, you know, I, I gave you 30 this week. Yeah, but, but you made 700 this week. Your tithes were 70. I appreciate it. Now, your pastor or, 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 or the, the leader of this house, if, if you're not a member, is, is grateful for your 30. But God says, I'm not grateful. I'm going to curse you. You think you're doing a good deed. You're not blessing me. I'm cursing you because you have been a curse because you're showing you don't trust me. And well, well Pastor, I'm just going to give an offering. You can't give an offering until you satisfy the time. 
He said in tithes and offering, we got to put it in order. You can't give an offering if you ain't giving your tithes. Well, Pastor, I'm not able to, to, to give an offering. I'm not able to pay tithes. Well, since I'm here and we're already in the book, let me go a little bit further. Prove me, this is verse 10, prove me here with said the Lord, if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. <coughs> verse 11, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, said the Lord of hosts. In other words, if you don't pay your tithes, I'm going to take it. One way or the other, God is going to get what he wants. Some people are saying, Pastor, I can't afford to pay my tithes. I'm telling you, you can't afford not to. There is a young lady who we had the opportunity to minister to, and, and she has been so diligent in paying her tithes since we've had that conversation. And First Lady and I went to speak to her, and she said, Pastor, the first lady, let, let, something I don't understand. Since I started paying my tithes, I'm finding money in different places. People are just coming out of nowhere. Money is showing up in, in, in the mail, and folks is just dropping by. I just wanted to give you this. We said, sweetheart, that is the blessing. And God said, prove me. So when we ask Lord, we're asking that, that, that she will have the faith and that when she starts paying it, that you show her because your words say prove. Yes, yes. There are people who I talked to today, today, who said they talked to people in the mob and mobsters are paying their tithes because they know that the word of God works. He said, I'm still trying to get them saved. And I told him, if you believe in Malachi, then believe in John. Mm. But this is one of the only times in the scriptures where God said, prove me. Yeah. Now, I want to get back. I want to get back to gifts. Now, as we're talking about this, it's 8.15. We have approximately 15 minutes before we close. And, and, and listen, today, today we had an opportunity. I was outside, we were doing the yard work, we were cutting the grass, and there was a woman who came, and she said, Pastor, I need some help. Can you give me $10? One, I, I would like to try to get a bus pass to, to, to get down to South St. Louis to see my uncle. Also, uh, what I would like to do is, I, I'm in need of, of some hygiene products. And, and I haven't had anything to eat. Now she asked for $10. What we were able to do was to go up to, to Popeye's Chicken. We went to Popeye's Chicken and we were able to purchase her a meal that was over $9. Then we were able to go to, uh, <coughs> excuse me, we were able to go to, uh, the Dollar Tree and, and pick up uh, uh, two bags full of things to help her with those hygienic problems. Then uh, uh, we went to Walgreens and bought, so we were able to do $30 roughly worth of things for the $10 that she asked for. Why? Because you all have been blessing us with your giving. Now, uh, I, I know that, that nobody's here, but for those who, are, who are, 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 are worshiping with us, we are asking, if you will, to, to please give to the, uh, please give to the Bible study. The, there are ways that you can give. If you want to send an offering through the mail, you can do that. You can send it to New Jerusalem Missionary Baptist Church, number one North Dade, or uh, you can give an offering tonight via the live stream using the cash app that is dollar sign New Jerusalem 1977. So if you want to, to give an offering, now make sure you let us know that you know the difference between your tithe and regular offering, or this is for Tuesday night Bible study. 
okay? Because we want to make sure that the tithe and the, the, the general offering has a specific purpose. There is a specific blessing that goes with tithe and offering, and we want to make sure that we are doing right and we are diligent with what you are sending and where it's going. So please, uh, if it's for Tuesday night, put on their Tuesday night Bible study offering so that we know. Uh, so now let's 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 go through this. Why? I, I want to, to end on this note. I want to end on this note. Why are you blessed? Again, why do you have gifts? Now, we're going to continue this on next week because, man, there, there are so many scriptures. We actually, when we looked up scriptures uh, about the gifts of God and all of that, we had over 15 pages of scriptures that's talking about the gift of God and, and, and all of that. Now, we all know the scripture tells us the the wages of sin is death. So what, what, what you really deserve, your paycheck, when you sin, your paycheck is death. But God gives you the gift of eternal life even though we didn't deserve it. Now, go to John chapter, well, no, I guess we already said Ephesians, didn't we? Did we say Ephesians already? Okay, Ephesians 2 and 8. And after that, then we'll go to John 3, 16, and that's where we'll end, uh, if, if God be willing. Ephesians 2 and 8, for by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. Well, Pastor, I don't understand. Uh, so I've been saved through faith, so it's my faith. So if I'm saved through my faith, then that... It's, it's based on what I've done. No, it's not. It's not based on what you've done. Yes, you had to confess. The, the Bible says that you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. You shall be saved on you. Because remember, the scripture says the only way that you were even able to come to God was through Jesus Christ. And the only way that you could come to Jesus Christ was that you was drawn by God. So it had nothing to do with you. It, it wasn't about how good your faith was or how your faith was lacking or anything. Everything that had happened as far as your salvation was a gift of God. Now, let's go to John 3.16. Now, whether or not you have to turn there, hopefully, that's one of the few scriptures that almost everybody who's been in church, or for those who, who really don't go to church, uh, it says what? For God so loved the world, the whole world. He, he loved the Christian people before they were Christians. He loved Buddhists. He loved the nation of Islam. He loves... Uh, uh, Baptist, Church of God in Christ, Apostolic, Lutheran, uh, Satan worshipers, uh, you name it. Catholic, Protestant, uh, Seventh-day Adventist, uh, uh, um, the Mormons, the Christ, Jesus Christ of Latter-day, Jesus God so loved the world that he gave. Here's this word. When you see gave, I want you to understand, when you gave, you gifted. Most people don't understand when you see, when, when God gave something, it's not because you deserved it. It's not because you earned it. That's why he gave it. If you earned it, then the Bible says he'll pay you. But when he gave, he gifted. So, for God so loved the world that he gifted Jesus Christ to you. So that who, what? So ever believe in him should. A lot of people say the word shall. But there's a difference in should and shall. Because there's a lot of people who, even though 
uh, Jesus Christ did the right thing, you still didn't do the right thing. So you should not, but there's a lot of people who still perish. But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So here in Ephesians 2 and 8, but by the grace of God you are saved through faith and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. That gift came by way of Jesus Christ. So as we were talking about victorious living, Yes, God wants you to be victorious. Why? So that you can extend the gift of eternal life. You can have, with your victory, you can make somebody else victorious. With your gift, you can give. With your strength, you can bear their weakness. With your finances, you can help build them up. I thank God for being an entrepreneur and having my own business, but I don't have my own business so that I can do all the work. I'm looking to hire. I'm looking to bring people on. I'm looking to train them, and for all the people who have worked for me will be able to tell you. Pastor Adams, Mr. Adams, or whatever, he asked me when I'm working for him, what would I like to do? Because I don't want them as employees their whole life. I'm hoping to help them become a business owner. Everybody don't want to be. But if you want to be, I want to give you the opportunity because God gave it to me. I was taught. It was gifted to me. I know a whole lot of people. And listen, again, college is a great thing. It, it, college, college don't make you smart. College is an avenue that teaches you how to learn and then gives you people in a network, colleagues, alumni who are in different areas that you will then be able to go to and say, hey, you are in this area, I'm in this area, let's network and, and build enterprises. College is great. But there are a whole lot of entrepreneurs who didn't go to college. There are a whole lot of people who have very successful, lucrative, financial millions who never went to school or, or, or never went to college and some who didn't even graduate high school. But God has blessed them. The problem is there are a lot of people who God has blessed who have turned away from God and said, I did this myself. I pulled myself up by my own bootstrap. You need to be very, very careful when you take the credit from God when God did it. And, and let me tell you this. God did it. Amen. Well, God did what? God did everything. Amen. Because we can do nothing of ourselves. Yeah, you went to work, but, but believe me, there was cancer at your door that God told to step back. There was COVID at your door that God told to step back. Uh, there was the flu, there was pneumonia, there was an accident waiting for you to take your life or take your limbs. But God kept the angels around you and gave you a hedge of protection so that you could go to work. Remember Deuteronomy 8 and 18? We've already read it. Remember that God has given you the power to get wealth. He's given you the health to get wealth. He's given you all of those things pertaining to life and godliness. It is his good pleasure to give to his children. Amen. We're going to continue this on next week because as we go into this season where we're getting ready to go into the debates and we're going into the voting and all of that, do it with love. I know they say that, that, that you shouldn't talk religion and politics. I don't care if you talk politics, but I do want you to talk about Christ. I do want you to talk about love. I do want us to kill hatred with love. That is the only way that we can combat it. We can get rid of this race war. We can do it. 
But the only way we can do it is through Christ. I don't care if you're white, black, uh, yellow, brown, red. You can be black as purple. You can be white as snow. I know that you were made in the image of God and after his likeness. And if you have accepted Christ, then you are my brother, you are my sister. You can be African American and have not accepted Christ and you are not my brother. Yes, I understand that we might be soul brothers, but the Bible says, who is my brother or who is my mother but the ones who do the will of the Lord? Let us get back to the place where we just love people. And remember that for God so loved the world that he, he loved you and that he gave his son. And while you were yet sinners, Christ died. So even when you wasn't loving him. So I'm not just saying to, to only love Christians. Because the way that you get to, to get a person to be a Christian is by loving them. Show love. To God be the glory. God bless you. God keep you. Uh, thank all of those who, who, who have spoken tonight. Uh, we wanted to be a blessing. Uh, I did see the message from, <coughs> excuse me, from Tony, who said to please pray. Uh, he's going up, I believe he's had uh, uh, an interview or a second interview, and he's asking the church to pray for him. And he said, pray that I get the job. I went on my second interview today. Well, brother, I believe that if you are a child of God, that God will not withhold any good thing. And if you're not a child of God, we want to let you know, and anybody else who's out there, that you can be a child of God by simply saying this, God, forgive me because I have sinned. And remember that everybody has sinned. All of us have sinned. But the Bible says that if you, if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart. Confess the Lord Jesus says that, Lord, I know that you have a son, the only begotten son, who died for my sins. And I apologize, and please forgive me for those sins, and I repent, and I will turn away from those things that I've done to the best of my ability. And the Holy Spirit will come in and begin to keep you and teach you, Lord, forgive me, I have sinned. I accept your son. The Bible says if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. You don't have to do nothing else. You, you, you don't have to, to tarry and you don't have to, to, uh, to cry. Uh, you don't have to look at your hands and they look new and look at your feet and your feet did too. Uh, you don't have to have chills. You just have to believe. If you believe, for whoever, or to my friend Tony, if you believe, then uh, if, if you are or you have accepted Christ, then you can believe that God will give you. And if God don't give you that job, know that uh, God will give you what you need and what you desire. That is our prayer for you. Thank you all for tuning in. We love you. We look forward to seeing you same time, same place next week. God bless you.